Since I sell die-cast models and trains on the Internet from my store called Papa's Trains, Toys, CDs, and more, I get many questions posed to me about train scales. By the way, you can check out my store at papatrains.com. Just go there, and you'll find several links. Click on the Papa Trains logo, and it'll take you to my store. Now, scale is just a relationship or ratio represented by two numbers. When we write the two numbers, we separate them with a colon or a forward slash. The first number is usually a 1 and represents a unit of measure such as inches, feet, meters, or whatever unit of measure you want to use. The second number tells you how many units of measure the first number is equal to in the real world. For example, if we use a relationship or ratio of 1 to 24, then a model that is 1 foot long would be 24 feet long in the real world. The larger the second number in the ratio, the smaller the model will be in the real world. And conversely, the smaller the second number in the ratio, the larger the model will be in the real world. The real world object that we wish to model is called the prototype. In the model train world, there are five popular scales, though others do exist. There is the Z scale world, which uses a relationship or ratio where one unit is equal to 220 units meaning one inch in the Z-scale world would equal 220 inches in the real world. These little guys are tiny. The N-scale world uses a relationship or ratio where one unit is equal to 160 units. This scale is growing ever more popular because you can model quite a large prototypical area such as towns or countrysides in a relatively small space. The HO scale world uses a relationship or ratio of 1 unit to 87 units. Now this is by far the most popular scale, but as I noted earlier, N scale is growing rather rapidly. Then there's the O scale world, which uses a relationship of 1 unit to 43 units. But you'll also see a ratio of 1 unit to 48 units in this world as well. I have seen models as large as 1 to 40 and as small as 1 to 50 being listed as O scale. Finally, there's the G scale world. Now this is the largest of the common train scales and it's usually used to model layouts outside. It's often referred to as a garden train. Now the scale on this is not quite as clear cut as to the ratio. Bachmann uses a relationship where one unit in the G-scale world equals 20.5 units in the real world. But Aristocraft uses a ratio or a relationship where one unit in the model world equals 29 units in the real world. Other makers use ratios in between. Generally speaking, though, G-scale is usually considered to be a ratio of one unit to 24 units. Usually, you can use any model that falls between 1 to 20 or 1 to 32, unless you're just an absolute stickler for a scale and never want to vary any at all, and in that case you just pick your ratio and stick to it. I personally work on the close enough school of thought. That opens up a whole lot of possibilities. For example, consider this. Perspective is a facet of art such that when we look down the road, so to speak, the further away things are, the smaller they seem. For example, Telephone poles would look successively smaller the further they get from us, and if they go back far enough, they'll actually disappear in the distance. Now, knowing this, we can actually force the perspective on our layouts by using slightly different scales and make the layouts appear larger than they really are. Just place the larger models toward the front of the layout and the smaller ones toward the rear of the layout. This will make the smaller models look further away than they really are. This then makes our layouts look larger than they really are. This is a neat trick since most of us don't have tons of space for our layouts. Now let's see how to make scale ratios work for us. To make a model from real world measurements, just take the real world measurement and divide by the second number in the ratio to see what the measurement would be for the model. For example, Let's say that you want to model a building that is 48 feet wide by 24 feet deep by 12 feet high. If we're modeling in G-scale at a ratio of 1 to 24, then we divide 48 feet by 24, giving us 2 feet wide for the model. We divide 24 feet deep by 24, giving us 1 foot deep for the model. 
Then we divide 12 feet high by 24, and that gives us a half foot or six inches high for the model. So for us to make an accurate model for our layout that looks like a real world model, the model dimensions would thus be two feet wide by one foot deep by a half foot high. Now you can apply this same reasoning to any of the scales that we mentioned before, and no matter how complex the real world structure, which we call a prototype, it's just a matter of dividing the real world measurements by the second number in the ratio in order to arrive at the dimensions needed to make a realistic model of the prototype. Now this may seem confusing at first, but if you give it some thought and work with it, it'll become clearer to you. Of course, the converse is true as well. If you have a model and you know its scale or ratio and you wonder how big it is in the real world, take the model's measurement and multiply by the second number in the ratio and you will then know how big it is in the real world. In the world of modeling, it's all about ratios. How big is the prototype relative to the model, or vice versa? Hopefully this will help get you started in understanding relationships or ratios in the world of train scales and modeling. Let me invite you also to visit our internet store at papatrains.com where we have over 500 items in most scales to help you put together that dream layout. Building a layout is great fun and there's no time like right now to get started. Happy railroading and God bless you.